What is the best pressure that you should be using for your hyperbaric oxygen therapy? The truth is there's not a one size fits all. And today we're gonna to walk through how to choose what the best option for you might be based on whatever health issues or health goals you happen to have. I'm Dr. Jason Saunders, founder of HBOT USA. Over the past 20 years, I've helped thousands of patients inside my clinic and I've trained and certified over 600 technicians and clinicians across over 300 different clinics worldwide. And one of the many things that we cover in these courses is helping practitioners understand protocol, especially with regard to which pressures they should be using for which people under which conditions or with what goals, helping to build confidence and clarity on how to deliver hyperbaric most effectively inside their clinic. So if you need help with that, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below so that you can take a look through the various courses that we offer and see if there's one that best fits your needs. There's a lot of confusion out there with regard to answering the question, what is the best pressure? Some of that is just based on opinion. Some of that is based on ignorance of what different pressures are capable of. And some of this is based on what a person has. Like if a clinic has a soft chamber, that's what they're offering. Or if a person has a soft chamber in their home, that's what they're being able to deliver. And so is that enough for what I'm trying to accomplish? In other cases, it's based on what I have. Like here's a clinic running a hard chamber and they want their business saying, well, high pressure is absolutely what you need. Low pressure will never get you the results you're looking for, even when maybe in some cases it will. Choosing the wrong pressure can absolutely limit the outcome and create unnecessary risks in many cases. So finding the right pressure for that particular goal is really important. One thing I'd like to bring to your attention is that a range of pressures might be appropriate. In other words, getting exposed to mild pressures, medium range pressures and higher pressures over some period of time could be an answer that a lot of people really need over the entire course of their therapy plan. I would also say that jumping into high pressures, if someone's never been exposed to lower pressures, can sometimes elicit a range of symptoms that were unnecessary because they went a little too deep, a little too quickly, and therefore having some exposures to a range of pressures, increasing the pressure over time would allow that person, if they need higher pressure, to tolerate that higher pressure better once they get to that point. I'd also like to bring up that I believe that different tissues tolerate different amounts of pressure or may favor certain pressures. If we're talking about soft tissue injury and repair, it may very well be appropriate to go to higher pressures as there's a lot of research supporting let's say tissue repair post-surgically responding incredibly well to that higher pressure range versus neurological conditions, which in my experience and what I've written about many times, especially in our textbooks, is that neurological tissue doesn't tolerate higher pressures as well as lower to mid-range pressures. And so again, depending on what the goal is, if we have a neurological issue, I would probably spend much more time, if not the entire amount of time at a lower to mid-range pressure and never even getting to some of the higher pressures. If we have time on our side, meaning we're not really solving for anything specific or acute, we're using hyperbaric primarily for overall health for the long haul, for the next decade or two or three decades of our life, we could probably get away with almost exclusively using lower pressures over long periods of time. In fact, that's what I've done myself using a soft chamber in my home for the overwhelming majority of the thousands of hours I've done over two decades, 90 plus percent of that has been done in a soft chamber in my home. I've had times in my life where I am solving for something specific or trying to elicit certain reactions at higher pressures. And so I've done ranges of sessions at higher pressures, but most of my personal sessions have been done in a soft chamber at 1.3 over long periods of time. The research and what we know about hyperbaric oxygen is constantly evolving. What we knew even six months or a year ago, let alone five or 10 years ago, is completely different. We're understanding new and different ways to manipulate hyperbaric through frequency and duration of session, as well as through frequency and duration of oxygen exposures or using air breaks throughout the session to stimulate certain pathways even more so regardless of which pressure you happen to be under. There are certain things that are going to happen to your body physiologically, regardless of which pressure you're being exposed to. As soon as you're being exposed to hyperbaric oxygen, you are going to saturate red blood cells 100%. That's the easy part. 
Then you're driving additional oxygen into the plasma of the blood. The plasma usually carries very little oxygen. Under hyperbaric conditions, you could massively increase the amount of oxygen that your circulation is holding based on three components. What pressure are you under? What percentage of oxygen are you breathing? And how long are you inside that chamber? As you're being exposed to higher levels of oxygen, that oxygen is going to have certain impacts immediately. We know regardless of which pressure you go under, that increased level of oxygen is going to be delivered to the mitochondria and you are going to get an upregulation of ATP production or cellular energy production. As you increase cellular energy, you're going to increase cellular performance of whatever cell or tissue type we're talking about. In most cases, this is a systemic response. You're driving oxygen to the entire body. You'll see improvements in cognition. You'll see improvements in work performance. You'll see improvements in immune system performance. You'll see a relaxation of your cardiovascular system. You're going to see repair and regeneration of both old or current injuries that you're dealing with. So virtually all of these changes could be expected to be seen regardless of which pressure you're actually being under. The reason to target pressure would be to target specific goals, neurological goals, immune system related goals, tissue repair and regenerative goals. And again, I would save the highest levels of pressure, 2.4 to 2.8. That's really wound care, carbon monoxide poisoning, gangrene. Most of the on-label conditions that are being treated in hospitals require the highest levels of oxygenation the highest levels of hyperbaric that we can deliver safely. As we get into less severe, but equally important tissue repair and regeneration, the 1.75 to 2.2 range is still incredibly appropriate. Could you get there at lower pressures? Most likely over a longer period of time. If I had to pick the best pressure, higher pressure would be the best for many of those types of issues. As we get more into the chronic inflammatory diseases, the autoimmune and neurological conditions, while hyperbaric is not a direct treatment for those diseases, it certainly does support people with chronic inflammation. It certainly does support people that are dealing with a neurodegenerative process in their body. And in most of those cases, the 1.5 to 2.0, call it 1.75 on average, would typically be the range of pressures that I would choose for those people. Could you do that at lower pressures? Yes, most likely over a longer period of time. But really, if I could choose, it would be that 1.75 range. And for those neurological conditions, TBI, concussion, CP, autism, again, not as a treatment for those diseases, but as a supportive therapy for those people, that lower range, the 1.3 to 1.5, in my opinion, would be the best pressures for those people. Again, one other way to answer the what's the best pressure is what can you tolerate? And with that, I mean, depending on how well you equalize your ears, depending on your responses to any treatment you do, but hyperbaric is included in this conversation, you may not tolerate higher pressures. So I might be saying that the best pressure for this goal is 2.0, but you may not tolerate more than 1.5. Well, then 1.5 is the best pressure for you because at no point in time during any of these treatments should we ever be trying to exceed whatever you're tolerating from a patient comfort standpoint. And so patient comfort and patient tolerance also has to play a role when we're talking about what is the best pressure for you and your treatment plan. So unfortunately, like many other conversations on this channel, but with healthcare in general, the answer to the question of what is the best pressure is it depends. It depends on what you tolerate. It depends on what tissue we're talking about. It depends on what health issue or concern or goals you happen to have. It depends on what you have access to. What's really important is that you have a sense and a way to determine based on my goals, based on my concerns, based on my tolerance, based on what I have access to, how do I use those parameters and yet still build an appropriate, a safe, and an effective protocol that's still going to drive me towards whatever goal I'm trying to reach. And in almost all cases, we could use those variables and still build an effective protocol that will meet your needs and meet your goals. Hopefully that helps answer what is the best pressure. And as always, I appreciate your time and attention, and I look forward to seeing you on our next video. 
If you're in practice or about to be in practice or you've been in practice, but you're trying to tighten things up and really dial in your hyperbaric practice, we put together a free ebook guide. It gives you some jumpstart tips as well as some checklists to go through to make sure that you have your policies, procedures all rolling in the right direction so that you can have a successful practice. If you're interested in that, click on the link in the description below and we'll make sure we send you to the page where you can learn more and get your free copy of our ebook.